I'm gonna use this for uh, a tip. <clears throat> That'll be a little quick one. This is a lower part of a Magpul Mo hand grip, <clears throat> and this is one of their Mo grips here that's designed to go directly onto a uh, forearm without a rail. <clears throat> Any of these, it, it'll all translate over. Whenever you have one of these situations where you've got an Allen key or something like that, and it, it you have to reach deep down in there. Um, <clears throat> what I, The reason I've got this off is because I was actually just filming the tail end of the Glock stippling video where I put this gun and the stippling on there. As I was moving it around, I noticed that where this was put on, um, the gentleman that got this off me, I'm left-handed, he's right-handed. And so <clears throat> the way that we wrapped it up and everything is a gift from his fiance. Um, I had to take this stuff off to fit it in. I, I actually, I put it in a BB gun box for him because he thought he was going to be getting a gun from her. Um, but we put it in a pellet gun box and uh, didn't tell him any different. And so <clears throat> I had to take this stuff off. But we knew we had to, some of this stuff had to be switched out anyways. So I believe it, uh, he put it back on and you know, he, he's a little limited on some of his tools and stuff that he had. But either way, usually it'll come with one of these um, Allen wrenches and everything. And people have a hard time getting enough leverage on this little bitty thing here. I mean, normally if you had, had uh, a screw that wasn't down inside of something, you tighten it, you know, do it quickly with this like that. Then you turn it around stick this in there and you use this whole long thing for leverage. Well, we can't do that here. So there's a number of different ways to go about doing this. Uh, of course, you can always get pliers on the Allen wrench and things like that. But an easy way, and usually everyone's got a box wrench. Um, you've got scissors around the house. I use these scissors because if you're just dealing with what you've got and you don't have any tools but you have this that came with it you can take scissors and you just wrap these scissors around this and you get them on there and just twist that gives you these scissors will give you extra leverage now the other way as far as that goes I mean I like using a box wrench with the box wrench, wrench, it definitely works better. Um, there you go. Just take that box wrench in. It really doesn't matter which way you put it. Um, if you put it like this, you just wrap it around that way. I like to angle it towards the direction I'm turning it. And once you get it like that, just turn and there it is. It gives you lots of leverage on that. And same way, but one thing you want to make sure of before you do that, <clears throat> you get this down in there, you watch it go in, you make sure, you make certain that you've got the right size wrench and wiggle it. Make sure that you got it seated down in there good because you will be screwed if you do something like this and then you bust out all of the traction out there, you strip it out. So, anyways, that's that, and it's good and tight. I'm actually going to loosen it real quick, and I'm going to cheat it back. Make sure that it's back as far as it'll go, which it actually was, but I wasn't certain. So... We go. We're gonna tighten it. Now that's tight. <clears throat> now what I'll do? I'm gonna put some thread locker down there on top of the threads. Now there actually is a wicking style thread locker that I'm going to be, uh, I gotta get another tube of it. And what it's set up to do is it is designed specifically for this type of application. If you've already got the screw in there, 
and you want to put Loctite on, the wicking style, it's usually green, um, is designed that through capillary action and it's very thin, it will wick and soak itself down in between uh, the screw and the nut on the threads. Um, works real good. There's also a specific type for slip fit joints to where if you're gonna, if you gotta press something in or slip fit it and basically hammer a bushing into something, you put this on there and it, oh man, it's it's good stuff. We use it in aviation, but it's expensive. So anyways, that's, uh, that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. What's up, y'all? Um, I wanted to show this rifle off here just a little bit, and I need some help from y'all. Uh, this is a Swiss rifle. It is a Schmidt and Rubin. Now I'm going to look here. I'm, I'm going to cheat notes here to make sure uh, that I'm telling you right. Schmidt and Rubin, 1889. Uh, it's a straight pull bolt. Uh, it's a bolt action gun, but to rack it, and it's racked. Fire that. There's that's your firing pin there. And that's how you rack it. Um, I'll give you some close-ups here in a minute. Anyways, uh, this one is actually chambered, chambered in. Got a chambered, man. Like I got a impediment. Not making fun of anyone that happens to have a speech impediment. Anyways, uh, where was I? This one is actually chambered in 308. Initially, the ones that came out, and I'm reading here, they were chambered in a 7.5 by 53.5 or a 7.5 by 53 or 54.5. They had a few different rounds. They are basically they were they were a low lower pressure round, is what they were. Um, this barrel, this this gun has been sporterized. Uh, you know th this would have normally looked similar to uh, like a, a, a Mosin Nagant, how they have, you know, a little bit more stock. They have the wood on top and the longer barrel. Um, this one's been sporterized. This is actually a Remington M14 barrel that's on here. Um, whoever did the sporterization did a pretty good job. Um, it wasn't, you can tell that it, it's got the relief here on the end for a military site. Um, like I say, they, they did a pretty good job on it. Um, someone's mounted some little, I don't know, probably weaver uh, rails up here, um, which I don't like. I wish that wouldn't have happened. But all in all, uh, it's a pretty good job on it. There has been some debate on this action versus the K31 and the 1911, which are two newer models of these straight pull Swisses. It's said that this action here is not strong enough to hold up to some of the higher pressures of like a 308 or something like that. Um, what the what they say the issue is is, and I'll cut to uh, a close up here, but these lugs here they say that the, the receiver is not strong enough and it can have problems with these lugs. You can damage your receiver. I mean, worst case scenario, you shoot your bolt back in your face. That's not going to happen. I mean, I'm not shooting uh, elephant loads or anything. It's, it's a 308. But if I want to shoot, uh, you know, I can download some 308 or something like that. But shooting regular 308 works just fine out of it. <clears throat> Point is, is that they say this design was inherently weak. The newer designs moves all of this part of the bolt and everything up front. Moves it or back here into it. And so it's a shorter bolt assembly and it takes these locking lugs and moves them up front. So the locking lugs are now uh, up here behind the chamber, like how a normal, newer style bolt is, instead of all the way back here. Um, all of this has been said to get to the point I need a magazine. So if any of you guys know of anyone that's got a magazine for one of these, and again, I'm going to, like I say, I have to read here. It's a Schmidt Rubin 1889, which it's a different magazine than what uh, some of the other ones look like. And I'm going to show you 
Well, let's see here. Let me get, I'm going to cover up anything I don't want you to see. Do you see that magazine right there? That's what it would look like. Rounded and hangs down. Um, so, what I'll do now is I'll walk over here and I'm going to show you how this action works. Get a little closer. Let you get a close-up view of it. You see the firing pin right here. The safety, to put this gun on safe, you pull it out and twist. There's your magazine well. And like I say, this is chambered in 308. And for a lefty, you wouldn't be racking this fast because you're going to chew your hand up, but this would be great in a stock with a with more of a right angle here, more of a pistol grip style, because being a left-handed shooter, you could have your hand here still on the trigger, and just have, as you fire, bring it back. Just have that offhand. I mean, you could you could manipulate it pretty quickly. But anyways, that's uh, keep some dry firing here. You want to rack this gun. You just come over here, or as a right-hander, you have that gun in like that. You fire. And you've racked, you've chambered another round, and you've cocked it, and it's got a pretty good trigger on it too. It's it's a nice little gun. Um, actually, I I would sell it to somebody if they were interested. Um, I got about 250 bucks in it. So if anyone's interested in it, uh, I might be interested in moving it, but that's not what the video is for. Videos for to try and find a uh, magazine. Uh, so if anybody knows where I can get a magazine for that gun, uh, let me know. Uh, I've I've tried Numerix. I've tried you know most of your normal places. Uh, I'm pretty much down to either. And I have seen some magazines out there, but they're a hundred bucks or something like that. Man, I'm not I'm not doing that. Thing is, is that being that this is chambered in 308, I I got it like this, and I don't know if the magazine for that gun will even hold the 308 properly. So I'm not spending a hundred bucks on something that I don't even know if it's going to work right or not. I'll just run it as a single shot before I do that. Uh, but if anybody happens to know if someone has a magazine or anything like that, let me know. I'd appreciate it.